started going in his younger years Always wished it would be his life Memories back to when he was a child Sleeping under starfield skies Hey guys, James here. Uh, excuse the uh, pandemic hair I got going on. Hopefully we'll get a haircut before the uh, summer's out. Uh, today I want to talk a little bit about some uh, how-to, some tech stuff. Uh, I'm no expert, so bear with me. I'm learning as I go here. But if you have a good eye, you'll notice that the boat behind me, some dumbass can't seem to put the boat on straight. And that dumbass would be uh, yours truly. So. I'm a complete noob. I uh, had a 16-foot bass boat before, which was night and day. Uh, it's like riding a skateboard compared to this thing. Uh, this is so big, it's like driving a condo building in the water. Uh, very difficult for a noob to uh, put the thing on the boat, cause, or on the trailer, because you can't even see the trailer in the water. So, uh, what we're going to do is we are going to put these boat trailer guide posts I got. These are 60 inches heavy duty uh, post guides from uh, Smith. Basically, as you can see down here, they just stick up the side of the trailer to give you some indication where the boat is, in the, or where the trailer is in the water. And uh, if it's not high enough, I guess all you'd have to do is get some PVC piping and uh, make it as high as you want. So, so that's what I picked up uh, from Amazon. I don't know, it's like 200 bucks. And um, I really hope it makes me, uh, it helps me avoid looking like an idiot uh, when I'm trying to put the boat on the, uh, on the trailer in the boat launch. So let's see what we can do. So here is what $200 gets you. Uh, on second thought, now that I've seen this, it's something that maybe I probably should have researched more and, and went to Home Depot and tried to build. But again, if you see those metal bars there, that's what I really, really wanted um, for a boat this big. Again, if I'm single-handedly launching it, um, I felt those would kind of keep the boat steady and keep it from getting away from me. Uh, but if anyone knows if those can be bought at Home Depot or somewhere, uh, leave it in the comments so that it'll help someone else. Okay, so you may not be able to make it out on there, but the instructions are pretty straightforward. The only problem is the bolt, the U-bolt they sent is too small. So here's the U-bolt they provide and that's how big it is so after a quick run to the hardware store I was able to come up with these ones that's pretty frustrating when really why wouldn't they just get the longest u-bolt they could and then it would fit all trailers but anyways slight hiccup we're now back in business Okay, so here we go. It's pretty simple. You just put your bracket up top here. Slide. Slide your bolts up. There you go. Put your washers on. Simple as that. And then you got your nuts. You just put it on loosely to start. So that you can adjust it as you go. There you go. So now you've got your your bracket on, and then all you do is you slide this big metal piece in. What you're doing is you're sliding it in. It's adjustable. You can go out a fair bit, and you want it kind of out to the widest point on your boat. And once you figure where that is start tightening everything down. When you're all done, you now have your post all set up so that now when you're trying to bring your boat in, 
you have a better idea as to where your trailer is in the water. Hopefully save a lot of screw ups and looking like a noob. Just an update on the guide post here you can see. Uh, that's five feet. Um, still not quite tall enough to really help me find the uh, trailer in the water. So what I did was for $16 I think it was I went down to the local hardware store and I got a nice uh, guide post. Shouldn't have any problems finding the trailer now. So, um, But realistically what I'll do is I will cut that down to something that's a little more reasonable but it certainly gives you the flexibility to uh, make it as high as you want and uh, that should solve that problem. So we're just finishing up the uh, guide post and uh, what you can see here is I've cut some holes in the end of the pipe here and what those are for is they're for the hooks for the ratchet straps that tie, uh, tie the boat to the trailer and what I thought would work well was when I load the boat onto the trailer and it's still in the water when I, when I back the trailer in, I'm going to have the ratchet straps, the hooks, in those holes. And what that's going to allow me to do is it's going to allow me, while the boat's in the water, once I get it initially on the trailer, I can then hook the ratchet straps onto the cleats. And then I can ratchet it down a little bit. And by doing that, that's going to straighten my boat up so that I can um, winch it on the trailer and have it perfectly straight. And uh, you can see I've put some paper around here. And what we're going to do here is just paint that white with uh, some fluorescent orange stripes on just to draw attention to it. Because it's a uh, 10 and a half foot beam, we need to have some wide load stuff on here. Around me hearties and a tale I'll sing to you I swear upon the holy book that every word is true And if you listen closely ye may learn a thing or two About the fate that may await ye on the ocean blue Hey! Charlie Royley and the Gunners made I be On board a pirate vessel that we call the Liberty Me life's a great adventure and to no one I'm indentured We live like princes as we sail upon the Caribbean If I part from terra firma on the day that I should die No carved stone shall mark where for eternity I lie No gold or ground, no dirt, no sod shall ever cover me Drake the black flag o'er me body and then bury me at sea so there's the uh, finished product on the guide post. I like how uh, that came out. The fluorescent orange looks really good and the white breaks it up. So uh, so no, I like that. Um, it needs to be adjusted a little bit on the one side and I'll probably have to drill in some holes on the very top to hang a flag off them. But uh, the desired effect is there. Uh, that certainly draws your attention to it. And you can see on this side there's where the ratchet straps attached to the back of the boat. So when I do load the boat on the trailer, I can have those ratchet straps hanging off the guide post in those holes I made. And then I can immediately attach the, uh, the ratchet straps to the cleats. And that'll just help center the boat. Just a couple uh, tugs on the ratchet strap. And that should sort of align the boat. And uh, just make, should just make um, loading a lot easier. So, anyways, that's a real simple fix. Hey guys, uh, another really simple project I'm uh, getting out of the way today is uh, the anchor chain, anchor road setup. Um, it's not marked or anything like that, and I just wanted to uh, check it and uh, put the markings on it and show you guys what we're using. So, everyone does something a little different. Uh, we have uh, 30 feet of chain, and then we have a little over 100 feet of line. So. I don't need to mark the chain. Um, I figured the shallowest we would anchor would be about five feet. So five, five, five to one scope, you know, you're putting out 25, you might as well have 30 feet out. So, um, and that would be all our chain, of course. So 
what I figured I'd do is I would then mark the road um, every 20 feet. That keeps it really simple. So, uh, so that's what we're doing. Um, I'll, I'll show you here uh, what we've got. So our boat is uh, 30 feet long, 10 and a half feet wide. It weighs about 12,000 pounds. So um, everything tells me that a 10 kilogram anchor is about average for this boat. Um, it's what it came with. Uh, what I would like to do is anchoring scares the uh, scares the shit out of me. So what I would like to do is I, I think I am going to upgrade this and have an oversized anchor just to be sure. And uh, this is a Bruce anchor. So you can see it's um, kind of got the claw to it. Um, works really well in um, sand, mud, that sort of thing. Um, I haven't had good luck with it in weeds. But again, I've only tried once in weeds. So... Um, but that's it. Um, so yeah, we'll see. We'll see. It has worked. The uh, the one time we have anchored so far, it's worked really well. But again, we were in about 10 knot winds. Um, I just like an oversized anchor just to calm the nerves a bit. So there's all the chain. And then I've measured out um, the line. The road is pretty good. There's some little bit of chafing right here, which I guess I'll address. Um... But I'm pretty happy with it overall. So I've already marked it out and I'm just uh, touching it up here. Just touching it up here. Um, orange is what we're using for the guide post. So, you know, I figured I might as well keep using it. And with 20, it makes it real easy for the kids. You know, if I'm saying, you know, we need to put out 100 feet well then they know how many uh orange lines to count and keeping it an even number of 20 certainly uh makes it easier for them so yeah so there you go you've got it all it's so simple but um, the people I bought the boat off, they never did it. And I don't know, just for me, it's peace of mind. It's just knowing how much road you have out. Um, you know, the more road you have out, the less angle um, the, uh, the boat has to pull the anchor free. If it's a very low-lying angle, angle. So, for example, let me just show you here. You just drop the anchor in like this and you have no scope out there's no angle it's straight up so if the boat pulls it pulls the anchor free but if you have a very low a lot of uh, road out a very low lying angle when it pulls on it what it does is it just digs it in all right and it's harder for it to pop it loose so with it marked just makes it really really easy and I'd be curious to know if anyone out there has the knowledge and experience for a 30-foot boat weighs about 12,000 pounds what is a comfortable size anchor uh, as I said this is 10 kilograms so I'd be curious what you guys are using out there so uh, leave a comment thanks